Welcome to the Smith and Rowland Show. Let's join our host, Alan Smith and Jeff Rowland. Welcome one and all. Yes, yes, yes. It is now time for the Smith and Rowland Podcast. You guessed it. And here we are again today to share wonderful insights and great wisdom. Yes, we are. From the couch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a short story that's a... It's got a hidden meaning. It's got a hidden meaning, all right. How are you, you today? You're going to tell what it is? Alan Smith. You're going to lead people up to that and not tell them what the couch story is? We were told. We were told by someone who approached us who uh, was on the radio station. To, uh, that they wanted us to get on the radio station, <laughs> mm-hmm. and they wanted to market us as two men, Mm-mm, two now, old men. Now, now. Sitting on a couch. Two old men sitting on the couch is what they wanted to title it. And the truth was that me and Alan... But they looked uh, at each other and sniggered. They did. And the, let me just frame it this way. This was about 10 o'clock one morning that we met with them, and we had already done a full day's work. They were mm-hmm. just finishing up. their latte. I know what a latte is, but I do not know what a latte uh, yeah. is. They were finishing their latte <laughs> as they walked in for their first meeting of the day. We had already done a full day's work. Yeah, we were the two old men sitting on the couch. Yes, that's right. And uh, so our discussion begins. And, and well, it, just so you'll know, uh, you look very distinguished in those glasses. It reminds me a little bit of Benjamin Franklin. They used to call me Jeff Distinguished Roland <laughs> Flash Type. <laughs> Yeah, Haley, it, was, it was a Haley, flash tag for Haley, a long time. I hope you heard that. I yeah, so hope you it was a flash tag for a long time. Jeff, yeah. distinguished. Distinguished. For those of you that would um, uh, dare to come out to one of our meetings where I'm speaking in person, you know what they would say when they left? Let's just leave them guessing. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me just frame a little bit of a conversation. Right, what we got? What we, we, got? Uh, we was listening to a podcast <laughs> that you and I shared with each other. And it was it was disturbing. There was that was the one was that disturbing. I pulled the pillow over my head and yes. started going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's the same one. one. Same one that I'm talking about. Yeah, I remember. And uh, normally, you know, when when we listen to a podcast, we either agree or disagree, and then we talk about those mm-hmm. points and uh, and sometimes put it on our podcast so that we can mm-hmm. uh, for sake of discussion. And what we try to do is find things that is affecting either the church mm-hmm. or the world in big ways, and that's what we discuss. Mm-hmm. This one, I think, is affecting both the world mm-hmm. and the church mm-hmm. in the exact same way. Wow. And I think it's doing it at a rate that is alarming, mm-hmm. and there's like it's there is, it's covered up, yeah. and it's cloaked in a little bit of darkness, yeah. and it is disturbing. We heard a podcaster who was on the air, and he was – ripping another ministry apart which we both we don't like that that's not what for something about that feels uh, dirty to us I don't, it either. does and for those of you who say well you're guilty of the same thing what we do is we point out those that are tearing others mm-hmm, down mm-hmm. there was a long-standing principle that you and i tried to abide by when we've been ministering together and that is that you god doesn't call us to tear things down he calls us to build things up mm-hmm. the holy spirit and the lord purges things mm-hmm. And he even told his apostles, don't you worry about the tares. I'll yeah, take care right. of that. That's what he said. Uh, and people hide behind the verses, you know, to expose sin. You're, we're supposed to expose sin. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's, you know, a string long of verses yeah. that's always quoted to support, yes. uh, to expose sin and this sort of stuff. And we're all we're all for that. We have no problem with, with exposing sin. But we believe that confession of sin... You expose sin through preaching. Yes. When it gets down to individual confessing of sin, well, I think that needs to be done in the privacy of you and the Lord or you and maybe a friend or someone else or maybe yeah. in a pastor or whatever. I'm yeah. fine with that. But I don't think you need to put it on the Internet. One of these, Jeff, we saw where they, this one person, which we called they called a victim, and I understand the terminology. The only difference with us is we think they're all victims yes. of the pit of hell. But anyway, they were being coerced, if you will, Jeff. Yeah, they was. And I know you now you need to tell it all. You'll feel better. You'll you'll feel you'll come clean if you'll confess that's all your right. sins to that's the world. Right. Yeah, that's right. And, and you'll be, as Kamala Harris puts it, unburdened. You'll be unburdened. Yeah. And and it's the same old same old Jeff. And to have somebody confess all their sins before the world, to me. That is worse than what happened to the person, Without a because doubt. you're 
persuading, coercing them. You're taking advantage of them. Yes, you are. And that's what you're exploiting. You're exploiting them. Yeah. So that you can have higher ratings for your own gains. Yeah, for your own gains. And and please don't couch it. I don't like doing this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do this. Now, Lord knows I don't my heart. Like to do I don't like to do this, but uh, I've just got to do this. I got to be obedient. Yeah. And then, don't do all that. No, please no, don't. Do please all don't that. do all that. Because you see, yeah. then we have to throw up, clean up, and then come yeah, back to right. rest. And, then, and, then, and, then, and then we're confused over whether it's our acid reflux or, or we just throw it up in our mouth. Yeah, we, we don't, don't know. We which. don't know which it is. Right? And, and Either way, bad. it makes us sick. It's like a lukewarm thing to the Lord. He. That's what, says. That's what he says. Now, let me say, in this podcast, there was, um, at the end of the podcast, I endured it, and then we got to the end, and he made some statements in the end of his podcast okay. that bothered me. Okay. And, and it bothered me deeply because it was the uncovering of truth that he did not mean to uncover, mm-hmm. I think. But I, I also believe that it is a dilemma that's running rampant in mm-hmm. the church and in the world. Mm-hmm. And, and I'd like to address it a little bit. He made the statement that this one leader of a ministry was too old because he, he was too old, of to age. Step down. He mm-hmm. needed to step down and let younger, stronger people lead that ministry based on a couple of things that he pointed out was that the uh, millennial generation and those younger were more therapeutically trained in the art of inner healing and things like that, and that the older generation didn't have that wisdom. So he alluded to the fact that the younger generation were just basically smarter than the mm-hmm. the older generation. We didn't know how to handle things mm-hmm. in these new times. Mm-hmm. Now, that's anti the way the Bible teaches things should be. Mm-hmm. We are warned that a novice should not be placed into a position of leadership. When that's done, normally there's a catastrophe to mm-hmm. follow. The word elder in the Bible, I know that some say, well, it doesn't just, it don't mean just age, but it also mm-hmm. means age. Trust no way around it. And I'm sorry, that's just what the mm-hmm. word means. And there was a reason why that God named them elders in the Bible. And the elders were supposed to teach and instruct the younger generation. Mm -hmm. But there seems to be this block between the two generations of not willing to hear or Mm -hmm. receive what older people say because they are ruled out as either culturally irrelevant or just too dumb. When the facts are, we have a, a wealth of experience to back up. The basis of our knowledge, normally when you reach a certain age, you you reflect back and you look back at things you've done, how you've walked with God, how you've heard from God. Because I even believe in hearing from God, there are even life lessons that you can learn as to how to hear the voice of the Lord. And sometimes it takes a lifetime to get there. Well, it usually does. And and so, you know, I took issue with that. Now, I also took issue with two things he said concerning inner healing. Okay. And and therapeutic knowledge, he called it, that's, basically. That's biblical, yeah. The lens in which he was interpreting Scripture was through the lens of inner healing and therapeutic knowledge. The statements was made that the younger people were kind of gravitating toward that kind of a, of a movement and a knowledge. Mm-hmm. Here's where it leads you. It leads you to examine, and this is what I'd like for you to speak to, Alan, if you would. The way we feel about the truth often becomes more important than the truth itself. Mm-hmm. And I think that in the millennial generation, there's a lot of that. All right. To start with, because my youngest daughter will probably be listening to this podcast, <laughs> so I have more at stake than the rest of the world. My youngest daughter, yes, if you call her a millennial, mm-hmm. We'll slap you. Yes, you just you do it just within ten foot. So you got to have a little clearance. Uh, she does not like to be she called that. She does no. not like to be. Called. And she says, "No, I am not." So she has her own opinion about. It. So I, I'm saying that disclaimer is yeah. everybody this morning that time doesn't does not claim no, to be no. I, and uh, I and a, I don't millennial. mean to allude to that. I do know that there are those that are millennials oh, yeah. that are at, that born in that time that are not. They're they're not, so they don't not, gravitate toward, don't, toward those towards attitudes. Those def- no. yeah, I and, and I also know some older people that are millennials. Yeah, oh boy, I do too. <laughs> no, I've no, met them. No, yeah. No. But anyway, we're kind of addressing the group that says 
uh, Rick Joyner's too old to preach and to lead something. And to lead That's basically something. what he's too old. Yeah. He's out of day. He's out of time. He hasn't had inner healing. Now what yeah. that crowd doesn't know is yes, Rick's done all that and he knows all that and and his he came to the same conclusion I think you and I, I did with inner healing. I don't think you can train the masses to do that. Now I have a sister that does called prayer ministry. Yeah. I wrap all of my inner healing acceptance in that one woman. So when she passes on, I don't believe anybody can do it. So you see, I'm a little biased here. I'm just saying I don't trust that well, and, and in the hands of others because you and I have done it. We've done and it. And caused total chaos. A, a complete, ca- complete catastrophe. catastrophe. Let's also say this. To embrace a term like inner healing, I would agree with that. God wants to heal us from the inside, mm-hmm. is, which is what salvation does. It's a deliverance of the in, inner man, and I believe in that. But the way inner healing now has become a ministry of psychological, biblical mm-hmm. training, mm-hmm. and I put it in that way because they put more emphasis on psychology than they do Word of God. Well, they won't say that's what they're doing. No, no, they'll say but they're the, doing the opposite, yeah, but that's, that's what, what they're, they're doing. doing. Mm-hmm. So the definition of inner healing ministries I think has got confusing. Well, what's the other term time? he called it? Therapeutic knowledge. Yeah, therapeutic knowledge. Yeah, therapeutic knowledge. And what verse? I think he used that from, uh, I don't know. Uh, that's First I, Opinion 1-3, I think. It's, yeah. it's Rip Bridges' translation. Yeah, yeah that's right. I'm just saying that he was alluding to the fact that the younger general, that Rick, for example, he just didn't have therapeutic knowledge like younger people do now he made that statement now here, here's the thing I, i'm not even trying to throw rocks at rip britches i'm not i'm saying that what he said i think uncovers an attitude of a lot of people of that age group mm-hmm. and i think that that attitude is prevailing even in the secular society the secular world as well as the the church world i believe that now i also believe this For example, President Biden, has he reached an age to where he should no longer be president? The answer to that is no. The proper thing to say is is he's got some cognitive issues Mm -hmm. that you can say comes along with age, and Mm -hmm. and it does. Mm -hmm. But that does not mean that everybody of that same age has the same cognitive disabilities. Mm -hmm. Rick, for example, which is the one that was being talked about, saying he was too old and everything, uh, Rick Jordan, I mean, he's had a stroke here in the last year or two. Yeah. And, but I have actually had dinner with him since then several times. He's as sharp as he's ever been. Yeah, yeah. It, so, it, I mean, just as sharp, sharp as yeah. he's ever the been. The spirit man, I think, and mm-hmm. it, this is a difference between the world and the church, and we have to distinguish the difference because mm-hmm. there is a difference. In the unregenerate world, all they have is fleshly knowledge. Mm-hmm. In the saved believing remnant, the spirit man should be growing stronger and stronger and stronger until it is released from this fleshly prison to join mm-hmm. Christ. Mm-hmm. That's the way the path of Scripture takes us anyway. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I say that in terms of as our spirit man grows in our walk with God, our daily relationship with Jesus Christ, and mm-hmm. we learn to hear from his voice, it would appear to me that the elders would be honored with a position for those to sit at their feet and learn. Yes, yes. Not to be dishonored, yeah. but to learn. Can I just give you one personal story and then, then yeah. carry on? I was honored as a child when I was 12, I think I was 12 years old, to be able to be around a preacher that lived in Radford, Virginia. His name was Val Aker. He lived to be 117 years old. Oh, my goodness. Jerry Falwell preached his funeral. I visited his home many times. I actually rode in a vehicle with him to Pennsylvania when he was 102. Oh, my goodness. And we picked him up, me and my dad, at his home in Radford, Virginia. We drove him to Pennsylvania. At the age of 102, we arrived at the church he was speaking at about an hour before he was supposed to start. So he had rode in a car in a vehicle for almost eight hours, got out of the back seat of that car, walked into the church, and preached for an hour and a half at the age of 102. Now, when Preacher Aker would preach, people listened with uh, expectancy. 
to hear the experiences that this man had had with mm-hmm. God over a 102-year span. Mm. He had a wealth mm. of wisdom. Mm. The riches of the wisdom that he would deliver came from a spirit that had walked with God for almost a century. Oh, my goodness. So that was honored. That was a place of honor. But now he would be considered a throwaway. Yeah, he's too old. He's too old. To it. even be heard. Mm-hmm. He would be an old man He needs to go home and sit on the couch. Well, my, my uh, to, in a response to what you're saying, Jeff, my biggest concern is not for the older man. It's for the younger men who think that they can't see beyond what they know. Yeah. And they're not concerned about knowing what the old man knows. That's my concern. Yeah. And that's the height, I think, Jeff, of just ignorance because... You're unteachable when you get to that point. He also said that Rick did not have therapeutic knowledge. Yeah. Well, the definition to therapeutic knowledge is the knowledge of principles, methods, and procedures for diagnosing, treating, and rehabilitating mental and physical dysfunctions. I mean, Rick forgot more about therapeutic knowledge than Rip Rich's knows. That's exactly right. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, yeah. using that as an example, yeah. and we're really not picking on Rick nor Rip Rich's, really. No. We're just saying he, he, that this is out there. And it's bigger than we think. And it's, it's bigger than... You and I can feel uh, it. Uh, all the as, time. As being the two old men. All the time. And there are some millennials and others that, that we mentor all the time. Want, yes. Want to say, hey, absolutely. what does this mean? What's it? And then there's others that think, well, you know, you're useless. You're too old. Yeah. So therefore, you need to be. I mean, listen, here's a person who's saying that Rick Joyner needs to set, he needs to resign from a multi-million, multi-international ministry that he built. Yeah. And as far as I can tell, Rip Rich is just trying to struggle to do a podcast and maybe yeah. another little business or two. But still, yeah. still, I'm just saying. Don't you think you're this not is the, the one that needs to be? No, he, he well, to number one, he doesn't have authority to. No, say. no, he doesn't. We, and we uh, know when we know he doesn't. And yeah. and we're picking on Rip Riches, but we're using him as the example yeah. of many out there that are criticizing on how smart they are and how dumb Rick is, and, and they hadn't even carried a five-gallon bucket to get some water. No, but the concerning thing is is that, and I can't I can't remember his real, his real name's Joshua Simona. The funny thing is, to me, is that he was drawing an analogy from a secular business that he runs to this ministry that Rick has given mm-hmm. birth to and seen grow. So he was drawing those analogies, and that's the basis that he was using to say, you know, you just uh, he's aged, he is too old to do this, he needs to give way because he does not have the therapeutic knowledge with which to deal Mm -hmm. with this, and that the younger generation have adapted to this inner healing sensitivity to victims, that type of mentality. That's what he was alluding to. Now, I think that uncovers a big opinion basis in the church. Uh, There's so many churches that look for, they want a younger guy. You you know that every church wants a younger guy that has kids so he knows how to do a youth group. Okay, let me tell you what my dad told me. He said, son, this is when my first child, Dustin, came along. My dad told me this. He said, son, he said, I can tell you when you learn how to raise children. And, And I said, when? He said, when you get them raised he said that's when you learn Mm -hmm. that's when you look back and you know this is how you really Mm right so i'm saying that if we had the biblical principle of how to respect and honor those that have walked before us Mm -hmm. that's missing in the church that's Mm -hmm. not there in the church there are reasons why that some and I'm not saying that just by the in lieu of the fact that you get old that you mm-hmm. you're wise. That's mm-hmm. not I'm not saying that. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying that when you have somebody that has a proven track record that has walked with God all through these years, not you know, the whole topic of sin is a different mm-hmm. topic to this. Mm-hmm. And I know the scripture says, Let no man despise thy youth. And all of those it also says, Don't put a novice in. So I'm say I'm saying that there is a darkness that's infiltrated the church. It has created this age gap kind of mentality 
where the younger generation are tolerating what the older people are saying, but they're not listening to it at all. Mm -hmm. They're blocking it out as if it's non-existent Mm -hmm. and and if we don't know what we're talking about. And because of that, it becomes harder and harder to receive truth from someone that is not of your age. And I don't think that's the way God intended. Matter of fact, I know that's not the way God intended. It wasn't the way I learned. I would get the old preachers and take them get hamburgers and everything else just to hear them talk. Because I so respected who they were, the knowledge that they had, and then the spirit of Christ that they carried. I was always intrigued with it. But nonetheless, but we see this problem today in the church. Yeah. And so now we've got younger guys criticizing the older guys. And and, and uh, I don't know, you know, that the same person, there was criticism about how bad Morningstar has been since 2000, 2002. And I'm like, well, Rick hadn't been old that whole time. So that's not going to yeah. work, really. But anyway, I think it's, I'm not trying to make fun, or really not, but I am trying to make a point and this, if you if you are a millennial and you're listening, you haven't arrived yet. There's things around the corner that there's you, you, that, can't, that even you can't even imagine. Can't even imagine. And we've yeah. and just and there's no need. I mean, I've talked, I've mentored a lot of folks over the years, Jeff, and I've even had to tell some to. In other words, when you use the language, well, listen, I've already been here and done that, or I've been oh, I'm oh, I'm been around long enough that I can give you that answer. Well, with some millennials and even younger, that offends them. Mm-hmm. Well, you just think you just answer everything because you're older. But I can't make an excuse nor an apology for being older. It's just the truth. It's just, yeah. and when you've been around longer and done as many things wrong as we have, then you, you that's have, right. You're that's exactly to have, right. Ha, to have an answer. That's exactly right. Now that's there exactly is a better way to do that, and we're assuming that's the question that's being asked. But I've noticed some kind of shockingly to me. Not 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 a lot, but some would hold it against me because. You know, I was 40 years older than them or or 30 or 50 or something. But in my understanding, I can't imagine. I'm glad that, of course, Confucius had a lot of wisdom and a lot of sayings. And I'm glad they didn't shut him down. He got older. Boy, I'm really glad they didn't shut down the Apostle John. His greatest works was when he was an old man. When he was old. And uh, that was his greatest revelation, which we look at and enjoy and read even today. You know... that statement's unfortunate and i can give him a a bad statement but at the same time the reason we're pointing it out is this is not against an individual it's jeff jeff and i are saying we are we've noticed that this is pretty it's it's predominant and we uh, think that the church is losing out by not considering the younger churches big time and can i i want to and i know i draw a lot of things from being in the military years ago but I, I'll never forget this. We were in training one time. We, I don't, I don't even know where we were at. Sometimes you'd get in an airplane and you'd fly around for hours and then you'd jump out and you establish your war preparation in the 82nd Airborne Division. You didn't know if you was jumping out and you were still at Fort Bragg or if you was somewhere else. You never knew. Mm-hmm. But we had a lieutenant colonel that was over our, our battalion. I don't know how old he was. He, he, he wasn't a very old man. Uh, he was kind of young. But we also had a command sergeant major. He had some age. He'd come through Vietnam. Mm. And he had some age on him. He was older than the than the lieutenant colonel. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget this. We were in kind of a meeting where what they call squad leaders meeting and whatnot, and they were giving us preparations for what we were to do on this particular military function. Mm-hmm. The lieutenant colonel asked the command sergeant major, what do you think? And the command sergeant major said, I'll follow your plan mm-hmm. if this is your plan, but I think you would be better served if you did this and if you did that because the enemy's going to be doing this and doing that. The lieutenant colonel submitted to what the command sergeant major said. Now, the lieutenant colonel outranked mm-hmm. the command sergeant major, but the command sergeant major, major had more experience than the lieutenant mm-hmm. colonel. See, there is that paradigm of submitting yourselves one to another. That's right. But the lieutenant colonel became a great leader because he was willing to sit and learn mm-hmm. from those who had experienced mm-hmm. things. See, there's wisdom in that. Mm-hmm. Now, the command sergeant major would not have been well served had he have not said... Mm-hmm. This is what I think needs to happen because I've walked through this. Right. You know what you understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And I think in the church, 
What's happening, Alan, unfortunately, we're shooting all of our command sergeant majors. Mm -hmm. We're totally setting them aside. And as a result of it, we have a lot of youth, which is great. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of youth that's leading the way. That's wonderful. I don't have a problem with that. I do have a problem when they set the seasoned, experienced veterans on the sideline right. and say you have nothing, no more to offer. And that's the predominant opinion, I think, that's being released in this world. That started actually, well, it's been with us probably for longer than I think, but I, I point back to when Barack Obama made the statement to college kids, you that's need right. to go home and educate your parents. And I thought then when he said that, I thought I would love for you to be educated by someone that's had some experience right. in what's going on. So I'm just saying that there is a predominant opinion out there, and it seems like that what we heard Rick Bridges say with the use of terms like therapeutic knowledge and inner healing, that that seems to be the way the church is going in, and I think there's a train wreck ahead because we went through that, you and I, and it created a catastrophe that nearly cost yeah, me my life. It did. And literally. Uh, and also, Jeff, we have a, you know, I'm around some churches and, and everybody's got a therapist. Yeah. I mean, about it, just about everybody in the church got a yeah, own therapist. Yeah, right. yeah, I go to therapy this week. Yeah, right. I'm like, and I'm not, I'm not really, I mean, some sometimes we a person needs a therapist. But the church, if we've really got the power of God, that should be doing a lot of the therapy, shouldn't it? It's Most super of preaching is somewhat. Well, yeah. that's, well, if it's therapeutic. Yeah. You got to get the thero in there. Yeah. So you can beauty it getting on out there. I remember people coming to me and they would, they would say, Preacher, I want to talk to you. This is when I was pastoring at church. Preacher, I want to talk to you. Inevitably, I would end up re preaching to them the same message you I just, had preached. just preached from the pulpit. They makes didn't you hear wonder. Me. Makes you wonder, doesn't yeah, it? They didn't listen. They didn't hear me. Yeah. Makes you and, wonder. And, but now that deafening is mm -hmm. happening at a greater level and we are losing. Mm hmm precious strategies oh from my. people who know because they've walked through it mm -hmm. you know because either their personality is different or they're whatever that they're, they're not listening to mm -hmm. and it's sad well mr Olin, we're out of time for today uh, we've covered this topic and got a lot more to cover i'd just like to to declare uh, that for gen z gen x millennials I just pray in the name of Jesus that they will surpass us old men. And, yeah, boy. Uh, yeah, boy. That that's our hope. They're walking more of the yeah, power of the Spirit. We're all for that's, all of that's that. That's our hope. And so, Lord, we lift them up. Yes, and Lord. We bless them. And, Lord, just like for Rip Riches, we're glad that he's trying to do something. Yeah, boy. We're, we're so glad he is. Stay on the fire. But it, it, it'd help him have a couple of two old men on the couch. But that's other right. than that, <laughs> uh, we do pray for him, and we're glad he's trying to do a work. Yeah. And uh, but anyway, so Jeff, have a good time and you a too. good day, and uh, we'll pick it up again tomorrow. Okay. Thank you for joining today's Smith and Rowan show. You can check out our website at kingdompropheticsociety.org and our daily unplugged podcast at smithandrowanshow.podbean.com. You can also join us on Amazon, Apple, or Spotify.